What's good, you too? It's your boy J Ross, J R the Star, back with another video. And today, as y'all can see from the title, crazy stuff, crazy news. We're gonna break it all down with y'all in the Star Lounge, giving you the latest and the greatest on former President Donald Trump being shot at in Pennsylvania at his rally. Oh, that chart, that chart's a couple of months old, and if you uh, want to really see something that said, take a look at what happened. Oh. Now, before we get too far and break down what happened, make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe. The same stuff that I always tell y'all. I'm sure y'all gonna like this video, and we're gonna have more videos coming like this because we inching closer and closer to November. Major stuff going on. Republic convention, Republican convention is tomorrow in Wisconsin. I'm sure Donald Trump, he gonna be there ready to speak out and give his spiel, you know, how he survived this uh, assassination attempt. So, Make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe to stay in the loop with the Star Lounge on what's going on. So y'all know on the Star Lounge, the first thing we're going to do is read the facts and the sources that we do have. Before we get into any opinions or any statements, we're going to read the stuff that we do know. So we do know that on July 13th, around 6.15 p.m. in Butler, Pennsylvania, at Donald Trump rally, a suspected shooter fired multiple shots toward the stage from an elevated position at the rally venue. This is from the U.S. Uh, Secret Service. Now, the U.S. Secret Service also, as we've seen and know, they killed the shooter who is now deceased, um, and Donald Trump is safe right now. He is safe. The FBI also confirmed that the alleged shooter name is Thomas Matthew Cooks. He is 20 years old of Bethel Park. I'm assuming Bethel Park, Pennsylvania. It says 20 years old of Bethel Park, so maybe Bethel Park, Pennsylvania. If I'm wrong, excuse me on that. They also said that suspicious devices what could have been explosives were found in the gunman's vehicle. This came from CBS. And they said the gunman also had in possession a device that he appeared to could have controlled those explosives. Um, this is from the Washington AP. They said that the law enforcement recovered an AR-15 style rifle at the scene of the shooting. And what they did count and confirm as I'm recording this video right now. One spectator was killed. Two were critically injured as the attacker fired multiple shots at the event. So that is the facts and the details, y'all, of what we do know of what happened. We got the shooter name, the gun that he used. They said he had some other potential explosive devices and stuff as well. Like That is what we do know. Now, let's break down how it happened. Because me personally, I found it kind of weird how in the world that a shooter would have a direct line of sight of the stage like so when i saw this shot, i was like how how do you even get that close to even get a chance to get a clear shot like as far as i know secret service is sharp they own it they clearing out buildings for like miles and multiple places around and then in my head i'm also too like why would they select that location for the rally if it had potential rooftops where a sniper or somebody could post up and shoot down like just weird to me like i don't know it that part just just kind of didn't add up you know but let's get into more of how it happened because some people uh there at the rally they was interviewed it was a major interview that went viral on twitter that i've watched and i'm gonna give y'all some details on that but let's get into how it happened because it really didn't make sense to me so the first thing I want to break down is this photo. And I got the same photo that I'm going to throw up on the screen. It's the same photo that I'm looking at right here on my iPad. So first off, number one. As y'all can see, let's look at them three buildings right here in the back. Where it's showing you where the uh, law enforcement snipers was. So okay, all right, I got you. They manning all those rooftops and stuff over there, making sure nothing good. Then right in front of that, you can see Trump stage. I'm like, okay, cool. So then as I'm starting over here and look to the left where they're showing the location of the suspect's body, why in the world is nobody not on that roof in the first place? Why is Secret Service not on this roof in the first place? That makes no sense. And then it says approximately 400 feet. Now, I'm not in the Army. I'm not in the military or nothing. I had never, you know what I'm saying, been in the field. I'm not no sniper. But 400 feet for a shot, that seems like it's a little much of a too good a chance that that could hit. Like, this is a direct line of sight. <laughs> like, so that's what kind of had me baffled. Like, 
how do they even allow that? I remember, like, way back, I want to say the first time Obama got inaugurated and he was doing, like, the walk along the street. I think they said they cleared out buildings for miles, like, rooftops and stuff. They cleared out buildings for miles. So, like, Donald Trump, he's not the president right now. He's a former president, but, you know, they still have Secret Service. Who picked this location? Who said that this is okay? Like, I don't know. Some people, they've been saying, and I ain't going to get into that too much. They were saying it's an inside job. Maybe some of the secret services compromise and stuff. I don't know. But I just found it really, really fishy how easily the shooter had a clear, clear line of sight of Trump and really could have hit the shot. Like, the fact that he was even allowed to pull the trigger amazes me. But wait, there's more. Head ass. But no, for real. So look, now we stand on this same topic. Stand here. So they also said in this from the man interview that I told y'all I was going to reference. Rally goers. Notice a man climbing to the roof of a nearby building and they warned the police, according to two law enforcement officials. This is from the Associated Press. One law enforcement uh, official, he climbed up the roof, y'all, that the shooter was on. He climbed up the roof and when he climbed up the roof, the shooter pointed the rifle at the police officer. And so the police officer came back down off the roof. Then right after the police officer came down from the roof, the shooter fired a couple shots at Trump. Now, Maybe because the police officer came up there and started him and the shooter, that's why he was going so fast, like boom, boom. And that's why he missed the shot because, you know, his plan was getting forward before he could get a good line of sight. I don't know. But two things. One, the police officer, and I seen somebody in the comments. So you climbed up there. My guy weighed the gun at you and you just came down. So, like, let's just say you were the last person to see, bro. And then let's say bro would have connected with that shot with Trump. They would have been after you. The MAGA people would have been after you because they would have said, you let it happen. You went up there and you saw him and then you came down when bro weighed the gun at you. Like, crazy stuff right there. That's that's number one. Then that's the thing too. I know a lot of people too. It was trending like right after. How'd you miss? He missed? Oh my God. Like, how'd he miss? Maybe that's how he missed. Maybe because the police officer started him and he had to rush the shot or something. I don't know, but just absolutely crazy all together. And in the interview, the man, he was saying, like, he kept telling people, like, hey, like, it's somebody with a gun. It's somebody with a gun. But this way, you kind of got to back up a little bit and think about them gun laws. At some of them rallies and, you know, Trump supporters, let's call it for what it is, y'all. They walk around with their AR-15s out. Like, they they flaunting them. They, they, they flaunting their rights, their Second Amendment right that they can have guns. Now, I would think, though, at a rally with, former president that more secret service and people would be checking for guns like even though it's technically the law that you can just walk out with and they have it you know what i'm saying maybe that's why the police wasn't so quick to respond that's what somebody saying they were saying the police wasn't so quick to respond because it's legal for them to have their guns you know with the gun laws like that you know what i'm saying i don't know but mm, the optics of it like it's crazy they said that the people's like hey hey it's a gun and the police was just a little too slow the police, I guess, you know, they were lucky that, you know, the shot didn't necessarily hit. But, man, that's crazy. Like, you just went up there and came down. And they really compared it, too, to the same thing at your bay. Like, they said the police officer, they got scared, and they just went back. And then they let the uh, shooter get off a couple shots. You know, fortunately, because I didn't be honest with you now. I personally didn't want to see Donald Trump brains get blowed out on live TV like, that would have took us back a couple years. That would have took us back to the 1960s. Like, at the end of the day, I'm you're not going to catch me saying, oh, yeah, I wanted to see somebody get killed. I'm wishing death on somebody. Like, I wouldn't do that because I don't want nobody wishing death on my life. And now we can get into my reaction. And it's unfiltered. That's why you don't see the iPad going like this just, you know, coming straight from the heart. Like, crazy, crazy sequence of events, y'all. Like, you look at the optics of both sides of it. Like, first one, just imagine, y'all, if that bullet would have connected and Donald Trump would have been killed. Like, crazy. Like I just said on my last clip, I ain't wishing death on nobody, but crazy. We got to go back how many years when they was assassinating presidents? Like, think about the global optics as to how other countries would be looking at us. Think how we would be looking at ourselves internally. Like, it's absolutely crazy work. Nick Obama, uh, he had put a tweet out. He always uh, speaking logically at the time. He was like, you know, although we don't have all the details yet, because he was responding really, really early after the event, before we even know who the shooter was, he was like, political violence is like 
not good and recommend it all. And of course, Obama gonna say it because he a former president too. They could try and assassinate him as well. Like crazy stuff like that. Then my other thing too as well, the fact that the guy even had a chance to kill him to me is crazy. Like the fact he even had a chance. Cause I know if it's me now, like I'm thinking, Secret Service lacking, the police lacking, security, something lacking. It's a lapse somewhere in there that is ain't quite up to par. So if I'm on the outside looking in, you know, maybe a Russia or China or a different country, I'm looking like, what America got going on? They taking out their own presidents again? They, you know, battling internally? Like, what is going on over there? Like, it's not a good look overall optically. Another thing, I'm going to be honest, I thought it was staged. At first, y'all, I did. But as y'all just seen, I was reading through all them facts. I was looking at the stuff. I talked to one of my buddies last night, Nick. Shout out my boy Nick. I was talking to Nick last night. I was like, I'm finna spend the whole day Saturday. That was yesterday, the day Sunday as I'm recording this. I'm gonna spend the whole day Saturday just researching and reading, trying to get as much facts and as much detail as I possibly can. From all the stuff that I found so far, it seems like this was like a real like this guy real deal tried to kill Trump. Like it, it seemed like a real deal assassination attempt. You know, I, you're going to have all your conspiracy theories out there. I've seen conspiracy theory with the Secret Service compromise as an inside job. Uh, I've seen that um, some old inside job because the shooter is also a registered Republican, by the way. And he had recently gave like a small donation to like the Democratic Party, some, some, something crazy, like Democratic Progressive something or something. But, you know, that's that's another thing that I'm looking at, too, as well. So. The optics behind all of this, y'all, was really shocking and caught me off guard. And they're going to continue to talk about this, like, they're going to talk about this for, for a while. And especially all the way leading up until November. And then, next thing that I want to get into, the reaction. Now, everybody who was either secretly supporting Trump or already supporting Trump out loud is full-on flesh. Now, a lot of people would say, after this, they were saying Biden, he could barely stay up. He could barely survive. Now you got a Trump out here surviving the assassination attempt that he has basically won the election. And I'm going to be honest with you. Like, I can see why they'll say it. I can see it. It's crazy to me. But I know me personally, it still don't resolve all of the stuff that Donald Trump has done with the Epstein stuff, with the convicted felon stuff. Like, that's the thing. So I just want to hit on that real quick, real quick. They be saying black people who felons, they resonate with Trump. You know what I'm saying? Because they both got to deal with the law. I'm just going to call black people out specifically here. You see how far your felony can take you. You see if your felony is going to allow you to get a job. You see if your felony is going to allow you to go out here and vote. You see how your felony affects you and see how it affects him. It is not the same. So I don't know where they're trying to make that comparison there and see that, but it is not the same. I know people out here with a felony can't even get a job. This man with a felony run for president. It's not the same. So just want to get into that real quick. But let me know y'all thoughts on this do you think it was staged or do you think this was a real shooting do you think it was an inside job do you think somebody in the secret service is compromised y'all comment and let me know what y'all think on this one but that's all i got on this one right now but expect more videos to come i just want to update y'all on what we know right now we're gonna keep the videos coming out because more details and new information gonna continue to be released i'm expecting monday to be a heavy heavy news day when everybody get back in and get to work so Appreciate y'all for stopping by. I hope this video was informative. Thank you for coming to the Star Lounge. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see y'all next time. Peace. JR the Star out.